So this is my Aiden Alzium run for the Way of Kings mod in Crusader Kings 3 on double stupid difficulty. The goal of the run is to claim 11 Shardic victories, which will then allow me to restore Aiden Alzium. Now, the recording is sped up by a factor of 10 because this is by no means a normal game of CK3. The difficulty provides debuffs that make the game pretty much impossible to play in a normal way and it was an entirely miserable experience to play and I expect it to be even more miserable to watch at one time speed. So at the start of the game here I've designed a custom character that will let me claim as many victories as possible in one life. I start by save scumming a whole hell of a lot to not get attacked by the Alethi and the reason that I don't just immediately swear fealty is that the Alethi King would then be able to claim the decision to uh, fulfill the Vengeance Pact and get Nightblood, and I want to do that, but I don't want to do that until after I've joined Hoyd's Dynasty, which will require him to have a son. So I need to wait until I see that his wife's pregnant, and then once she is, I can swear fealty, and the AI doesn't claim the decision for a couple of years, so I can, I can wait until the kid's born and join the Dynasty. I choose not to be their child directly for a couple reasons. First is that I want to be able to form my own cadet branch to become househead, which I won't be able to do as long as Hoyd is alive, and Hoyd is immortal, so that would be a problem. And also, I don't want to accidentally risk inheriting Alethkar because I cannot handle all of the vassals with uh, this difficulty. So by being a distant relative rather than their child, I, I get rid of that risk. So after uh, safe scumming, swearing fealty, I then just sit and wait for a little while because I want to become an adult before I uh, do anything from here. Because I need to go on a pilgrimage to see the Night Watcher to claim my first boon. I do that and I get the placeholder boon. The reason I need that is it reduces the number of vassals that I can have. And the first victory I will be going for is the Harmony victory, which requires me to have exactly my domain limit exactly my vassal limit and uh, a balance of good and bad genetic traits, a balance of good and uh, sorry, a balance of virtues and sins and then I need to have at least 16 development in all of my personal holdings. It's actually 17 because it's greater than 16, which the mod creator should fix, come on Tobson. Uh, and then it's just a matter of getting the control up in all of those holdings. But I can't fight for these uh, extra provinces I'm going to need because I get something like 16% of the income that you would normally get because I have negative 60% domain tax and then negative 60% income and those are multiplicative of each other. And I also on top of that have three times army maintenance. So you know it's not really feasible to go and fight a normal war. So instead I use the mods dueling system to get all the extra provinces I need and I just sit here and spam jewels on people that have traits that I know increase jewel acceptance. Now I don't, I've got a magic sword called Nightblood that gives me plus 50 prowess which makes it pretty easy to win the jewels but I don't equip that until after they've accepted the jewel because uh, my prowess plays into jewel acceptance chance so that maximizes my chance that they'll say yes. So I'm just sitting here scrolling through it, everyone trying to find anyone who will accept it, it's, uh, it's quite painful. And so the objective of the run of the whole is to claim 11 different Shardic victories. There are only 14 and two of them are mutually exclusive so I don't have a whole lot of options. The first one, as I said, is going to be Harmony. The, um, the others we'll get to as, uh, as they become relevant for the run and I start working towards them as to what their requirements are. But uh, the char all the characters' traits play into it in some way. That's how carefully crafted he is. And I will eventually become immortal, which is the, the main reason this run is valuable, is that you can get an immortal character. You'll have noticed that I claimed one Dynasty Legacy, but I've still got enough uh, renown to claim another. The reason I haven't done that yet is that the next one I want adds 10 to my vassal limit, so I'm just waiting until after I've done Harmony's victory for that. I'm also holding all of the land that I'm getting from Jules right now because I don't want to give it to the AI and risk them screwing up and losing it somehow, so I'll just hold it until I'm otherwise ready to claim the victory. So 
So at this point I've got basically all the land I need, so I decide it's time to go on a pilgrimage to get the placeholder trait. The reason I've waited until now to get that is that it gives me negative 100% vassal tax, which puts me at negative 160%. You'll then see I get myself a stress break, and I then did a bit of safe scumming to find out exactly what level of stress I need to, for the event to result in getting the bondsmith trait. The um, the random function is impacted by stress because it plays into the chances of each radiant order, but it's deterministic, so a given value of stress will always result in the same outcome. So I can just go and save scum up with the console, find out exactly what I need, and then get there. I then uh, can claim Harmony. I don't get the trait I want from it, so I save scum, get Ferrochemist, which is the better of the two traits in my opinion. I then go and ask my new friend, the Night Watcher, for a second boon, and she grants me Immortality. So I can now sit here and take my time and get all of the uh, lifestyle perks knocked out using Ferrochemy to... Uh, I can store more than 100% monthly lifestyle XP, which doesn't result in a negative value, it just leaves it at zero. And then I can tap that and get a lot more than I would have had if I just waited. Especially given that I have debuffs to my monthly lifestyle XP from the traits I've taken. So I can just sit here and slowly grind this out now that I've claimed Harmony. There's uh, there's not a whole lot to, uh, to do other than just, you know, make some progress with the character. I'll eventually start working towards Devotion and Dominion as my next victory, which will require me to be a subject of my spouse while also being their best friend and soulmate, and then have a hundred, uh, no, not a hundred, fifty popular opinion in every county in my sub realm, and I have to control a full kingdom. So that's going to be fairly difficult. I, uh, there's a couple different ways I was considering doing it at this point, still hadn't made my mind up. It was going to going to see how things were as I got there. But that's still a fair while off yet. So yeah, I start just experimenting with Ferrochemy, seeing how things work, using the uh, monthly lifestyle XP to speed things up, and I then start to do things with storing connection, which makes people hate me, but they hate me most of the time anyway. And I can then tap that at a later date where it'd be beneficial for people to not hate me for a second. The um, There's there's quite a few useful abilities in the Ferrochemy uh, Right. So there's a there's a lot of ways I can use it to cut back on save scumming, such as by tapping it every time someone's trying to assassinate me. Then everyone leaves the plot, and I don't have to keep save scumming until a 95% chance scheme fails, which is, I've got to say, is really nice. Probably cut like 20 hours off the run, because there's a lot of assassination attempts. To go back to the character design for a second, the culture and religion were both chosen fairly specifically as well. Old blood culture lets me claim the uh, fulfill the vengeance pact decision without it being classed. As, there's there's a certain subset of Alethi cultures that result in your government always flipping to a high prince government at the start of the game. I didn't want that because my faith that I'd chosen was luminous, which lets me start the game as a luminocracy, which greatly cuts down the length of this run. It's necessary to be a luminocracy in order to claim honours victory, which we'll do later, but the way you normally get a luminocracy is by first acquiring all ten innovations that are locked behind radiant traits in the second era. But to unlock those innovations, your culture head has to have the that radiant trait. Once you've got all ten of them, you can then get the luminocracy innovation, which lets you swap to a luminocracy government type. I uh, didn't want to do that. I could have... Uh, Using Royal Court, I could have gone around and created cultures, uh, merged cultures with uh, cultures that already have the various innovations. That's still a lot of work, a lot of prestige. Uh, would have involved getting provinces of the requisite cultures, then increasing cultural opinion and all of this nonsense, and I just didn't want to do it, so I started Luminocracy. It, it cut back a lot of the work. The main downside of the Luminous Faith is that it has another income penalty, but I am... Um, I got myself educated by Hoyd while I was a child, and that let me swap to his faith of Aiden Alzik, which actually has an income boost, which is nice. So I'm uh, less less penalised than I normally would have been. You can see here that I'm getting attacked by AI, and I consider going to fight it, but it's, uh, it is absolutely not worth the effort, so I just surrender. You can have it. If I need more land, I'll duel for it. It is absolutely not worth trying to, to defend. You can see there I tried to revoke a province. 
they say no, the entire country rebels. Don't like that. I uh, start experimenting with seeing if I occupy their province, will I get 100% war score and uh, be able to imprison my entire realm? But I realise there's no chance I can occupy their province, so I just save to come back. Then uh, tap some connection, see if he'll accept it being revoked. He still won't, and everyone still joins eventually. No, no, no they don't, that's a lie. They do not join. But yeah, still, still can't actually win the war, so... I'll start looking for other people that I can revoke land from. See if any of them will actually accept it, do a bit of saves coming so I can, uh, you know, hopefully get positive income instead of this negative 0.4. I don't have any men at arms, I don't have any um, court amenities, I have no expenses and I'm still losing money. This is bullshit. I, uh, I almost executed a prisoner there, which would have been bad because that locked me out with one of the victories I need later. But uh, fortunately I remembered at the last second not to do that. Now that I've uh, got some land revoked, I can stop tapping on my connection, store it again, and I'm only losing 0.2 duck instead of 0.4. Yay, lucky me. So yeah, there's not a whole lot to say about the rest of this episode. I just sit here and slowly uh, try to build my domain a little bit, make some progress with the character. Try to uh, suck a bit less. I am... Um, I'll have a use for all this piety and prestige that I'm building up eventually. I will, uh, I'll be creating my own faith, which when I proclaim my bloodline holy, which I need to do for some of the other victories later on, uh, because I will be the head of faith, it will add plus one renown level, which will be useful for the whimsy victory. So I just sit here and manipulate Farrakami a little bit to maximize my lifestyle experience. You have no idea how many times I clicked in that window during this run. Like, I'm pretty sure I've destroyed all the tendons in my wrist. I will never be able to move again. So I learn of a murder scheme against me and I briefly consider exploiting the fact that Farrakemi will let you tap more resources than you have stored at this point. He has now patched that, you can't do that anymore. But I was like, no, I don't want him to invalidate the run for this. I'll go back down, only use the three that I have stored to increase my scheme discovery chance. Doesn't work, but fine, I'll just tap connection instead, everyone will leave the plot. I can then just sit here and uh, I try to store all the connection again and everyone just joins, so well, fuck. <laughs> I better, uh, better hope that they don't get me. At this point, I'm pretty sure that this is the guy who's trying to kill me because he hates me. So I start trying to duel him to lower his health and hope he'll die. And eventually, he does. So I was looking at Mercy's victory there, that requires me to release 100 prisoners at this point. That requirement's going to change before I get that far, but I, I figured that's going to take a hell of a long time because you have to have an execution reason on them and releasing the same person multiple times, even if you get a new execution reason, does not count, so it's painful. I he you see here I'm starting to create my custom faith, I uh, eventually decided the name is cringe and I should change it. So it becomes a cheesy faith, which is... I think we can all agree, the vastly superior name. I do this because I need a, um, I need to be head of faith to claim the final decision, and I also need to claim the bloodline holy, and as I said earlier, doing the temporal version is just objectively better than the spiritual version, so there's no reason not to. I won't be getting uh, crusades either way, because the spiritual version of crusades is better than the temporal version, but I just, uh, I'm not changing the doctrines of the faith. The tenets, rather, so I won't have access to crusades, so it makes no difference whether it's temporal or spiritual from that perspective. And have it, having it be temporal means people have to ask me to do things, which is always nice. At this point, I start trying to seduce this uh, the uh, colon woman. This is because the um, the rules in the game mean that. Most faiths have a consensual marriage requirement, meaning that you need to have some form of relationship with the person before they will agree to marry you. You can't just roll out a political marriage like you normally do. So I start tapping connection and all this nonsense to try and get her to say yes to the seduction scheme. Have some difficulty with her getting married off beforehand, but none of this is going to matter because in the end all of the work that I do towards devotion and dominion here, I decide to roll back because I'm not ready for it. So most of uh, most of the work that's happening right now, it's all going to be rolled back in tomorrow's video. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm 
and you see it got a whole lot of effort trying to seduce this woman. The um, the first time I got it to fire, I had a 95% chance, but unfortunately I got that 95% chance after the event had fired by tapping connection, and for some reason, despite the fact that the chance displayed changes, the actual chance of success doesn't. So I need to tap all the connection just before the event fires. It's really annoying. And then after rolling back to, to do that, she gets married now before I finish with the seduction scheme, which gives it a negative 60% chance and also means I can't marry her because she's already married and I'm not allowed to kill her husband because that will lock me out of the mercy victory that I need to do later. So it's, uh, it's really annoying that I spent this much effort doing this and then in the end roll back and say not to marry her anyway. So a lot of, uh, a lot of effort went into this. You have to remember this is at 10 times speed, so I spent like multiple hours trying to get this to work basically. <laughs> I do finally manage to actually get her to to marry me though, which is nice. I uh, I then decided to put her on the throne of Alethkar via a claimant faction, and it all goes horribly, horribly wrong. The um the empire splits into Alethkar and well, it's called Colin, but it's the Empire of Uruthiru because I vassalized Uruthiru earlier once I became a bondsmith, and the province is a one province empire, so. The Emperor of Alethgar just created that one. And yeah, it creates some problems for me. I really wish I hadn't done that, but it's fine. We live and learn and all that. We have a huge dominance over the uh, the Emperor, so I just let the claiming faction do all the work. I just sit here and, you know, kick back. Chill with my vassals who all hate me. Fun times. started to work on the intrigue lifestyles which are really really useful for uh, avoiding wars because I can uh, kidnap people and all this stuff and I can uh, on the uh, in the right hand path there I can get some stuff that will uh, give me extra stat points while I'm stressed which is something I badly need and I can get plus 50% in prison chance which will let me start imprisoning vassals to revoke their land because as you can see my domain limit keeps going up this is because the uh, the harmony victory that I claimed earlier provides 16 stress. Uh, sorry, it provides 16 stewardship per stress level to every dynasty in the game. So, I my uh, my stewards will constantly have high stewardship because I'll swap them out if they ever drop a stress level. My wife usually has fairly high stewardship. I will usually have fairly high stewardship. So I can end up with pretty ridiculous domain limits. Uh, I will apologise for these random sections where nothing happens. It's basically I went AFK or I was speaking to someone on the other monitor and I forgot to cut the recording. I'm not going to scroll through 25 hours of footage to find them and cut them out. I'm sorry, you're just going to have to deal with it. It's at 10 times speed so it won't be that bad, right? Right? I start trying to revoke some land and I, I'm having some real problems because I greatly weakened my liege which means that there's people declaring independence, there's uh, populist factions, all this nonsense. So this is this is the main reason I decided to roll it back tomorrow is that yeah, I've created far more problems than it is worth currently. There's a... Uh, I start losing all my vassals and as I said earlier I need to completely control my kingdom in order to claim devotion and dominion and it's just a nightmare to get land back so I'm just right. This is all for nothing, and I think I roll back to something like 12.37 tomorrow. A lot of progress lost for uh, for basically no reason, because there was very little chance I was going to be able to claim Devotion and Dominion with my current wife anyway, because, as I say, I need to have 50 popular opinion with every in every province that I can, that's in my sub-realm, and I can do that via me revoking all and holding it all personally, because... You know, I can get ridiculous popular opinion boosts by having every single lifestyle tree filled out. Or the other option is to get that by doing the invention victory, which provides plus 100 popular opinion. I hadn't really made my mind up which I was doing, and that's how these problems happen. I should have planned this out much better. But that is basically where I called it for day one.